peculiar characteristics of the Negro psyche. Peculiar characteristics of the Negro psyche. Peculiar characteristics of the Negro psyche. Number one. We are the only race that will allow its members to sabotage and destroy its progress over petty differences, jealousies, and envy. No other race will allow any organization, any church, any member of its community to destroy the collective progress of the entire race. Nobody allows that except Negroes. Nobody allows that except Negroes. Let me give you an example. The gangster rap community is out of control. The gangster rap community is out of control. I just heard another young rapper was murdered in Louisiana. I just heard another young rapper was murdered in Louisiana. I just heard another young rapper was murdered in Louisiana. I just heard this. And I'm trying to understand why the elders in the hip hop community don't put no law in order to these hip hop streets. I'm trying to understand why the black community doesn't impose law and order on the gangster rap community. I don't understand this. I do not understand. Actually, I do self hate. But I need you to understand we're the only race that will allow its children to destroy the whole race. We will let the black bourgeoisie destroy the whole race. We'll let the black feminists destroy the whole race. We'll let the manosphere destroy the whole race. We'll let the rainbow gangers destroy the whole race. We'll let the anti-Africans destroy the whole race. We're the only race of people. That, dis that destructs from within. If you want the Chinese to go away, you're going to have to defeat the Chinese. They're not going to defeat themselves. If you want the Arabs to go away, you got to defeat the Arabs. They're not going to defeat themselves. If you want the European Jews to go away, you're going to have to defeat the European Jews. They're not going to self-destruct. If you want the Anglo-Saxons, if you want the British... If you want the Mexicans to go away, you're going to have to defeat them. They're not going to self-destruct. Nobody has to defeat African people. We're doing a good enough job ourselves. No one has to defeat African people. We're doing a good enough job ourselves. No one has to defeat African people. We are doing a good enough job on our own. Number two. We are the only race in the country, the only one who believes that the government should solve all of its major problems. Nobody else believes this but Negroes. Two trillion dollars, two trillion dollars of buying power. And we want to sit around and wait for a reparations check. I support reparations. I support reparations. I believe in reparations, but I don't believe in sitting around waiting for a check from the government before I get up off my ass and do something for my community. That is a cop out. That is an excuse. And that ain't nothing but escapism. That is a cop out. That is an excuse. And that is nothing but escapism. You should not have to wait on the government to solve your problems. And the reason black folks... Love waiting on the government to solve your problems is because, number one, self-hate and you have no racial integrity or political character. We as a race have very little racial integrity, very little racial character. As one brother called it, a racial ego. Black people don't have a racial ego. You disrespect Chinese they're going to come at your ass. You disrespect the European Jews, they're going to come at your ass. You disrespect the Anglo-Saxons, they're going to come at your ass. You disrespect the Arabs, they're going to come at your ass. You disrespect the Mexicans, they're going to come at your ass. You disrespect black folks. 
we will forgive you and we will ask you to be more compassionate and understanding and merciful towards us. We're the only group without a racial ego. We are the only race. This is why we are the doormats for everybody else in the country. This is why we are the doormats for everybody else in the country. You cannot insult another race and think you're going to get away with it. You cannot insult another race and think you can get away with it. But you can insult black folks and we will forgive you before you get arrested. We will forgive you before you go to jail. We will forgive you before you have been charged with a crime. We will forgive you before you have been acquitted. Excuse me, before you have been convicted. We will forgive you before you have been sentenced for any time. That's black folks. Black folks. Go ask the European Jews. Have they forgiven the Nazis yet? Go ask the European Jews if they have forgiven the Nazis yet. Go ask them. Go ask them, doesn't your religion teach forgiveness? So why haven't you forgiven the Nazis? You know why they haven't forgiven the Nazis? Because what the Nazis did to the European Jews was not a mistake. It was intentional. You don't forgive intentional racial tragedy and abuse and genocide. You don't forgive genocide. Who in a right mind would forgive an act of genocide? It's the worst crime you can commit against humanity. It's the worst crime. Genocide is the worst crime you can commit against another people. And black folks are forgiving white folks for slavery because your self-esteem is so low. Your self-esteem is so low, you want to be accepted by white folks. You want to be accepted by white folks. You want acceptance. And we're sitting around begging the government to stop crime in our community. That's insane. That is insane that black mothers and black fathers, that is insane that black elders are calling the white government to come and patrol their black children. I need you to see how sick this is. I need you to step back. I need you to understand, overstand, and understand how sick and insane and irresponsible it is. We got millions of black adults in this country. We have millions of black adults in this country. We have millions of black adults in this country. And instead of us getting out in the streets of Chicago, getting out in the streets of Indianapolis, getting out in the streets of Baltimore, getting out in the streets of New York City, getting out in the streets of Atlanta and Philadelphia and Little Rock and Mobile, Alabama, getting out in the streets of New Orleans and Phoenix and LA and Oakland, Milwaukee and Detroit, instead of all the black adults organizing ourselves and going out into the street to tell our children, we now have a community patrol. We now have a community patrol in uniform, black men and women in uniform, community patrol. We have our own curfew, our own, curfew, our own rules. Put your hands on a black woman. We're going to whip your ass right there in the street. Disrespect your mother. We're going to whip your ass right there in the street. Disrespect an elder. We're going to whip your ass right there in the street. And we dare your little young ass to pull out a gun. We dare your little young ass to pull out a gun. We double, triple, quadruple dare your young ass to pull out a gun. It'll be the last time you pull out anything in your life. But the problem is, the problem is, Number one, black people too lazy to take their destiny into their own hands. Slavery destroyed the spirit of independence in black people. Slavery destroyed the spirit of independence in black people. Slavery destroyed the spirit of independence in African people. We want the government to save us from our children. I need y'all to hear what I'm saying right now. I need your third eye 
wide open. Black people in 21st century America wants the government to save them from the children they raised. You want the government to save you from the children you gave birth to. That is insane. That is insane. That is how you're going to give birth to an entire community of black children, raise them the wrong way, educate them the wrong way. Rear them the wrong way, socialize them the wrong way. And then when they get out of control, when they get out of control, you tell the government, I need you and the racist police. I need you and the racist police to come into my community and save me from my children. That is insane. That is absolutely insane. We don't want responsibility for nothing that involves the collective. That makes the Negro unique in American society. You don't want no responsibility for nobody who looks like you except you and your children. You don't want responsibility for anyone who looks like you except your children. The epitome of selfishness. The next point relates to the concept of power sharing. Power sharing. Negroes in America are the only people in the country who believe in sharing power with other race groups. Let me say it again. No other group in this country is thinking about sharing power with another group. They're not trying to share political power. They're not trying to share financial power. They're not trying to share intellectual power, social power. No group, no race in America believes in power sharing. They believe in power accumulation. They believe in power domination. The European believes in power accumulation and domination. The Asian believes in power accumulation and domination. The Mexican, the Arab, the East Indian, the Latino, they believe in power accumulation and power domination. Negroes believe in power sharing. You want to share power with the whites. You want to share power with the Arabs. You want to share power with the Mexicans. You want to share power with the Chinese. You want to share power with the European Jews. You want to share power with the East Indians. Can I ask you a question? Can you show me any race in America that shares anything with another race? Sh show me, Show. give me an example of power sharing in the black community. Excuse me. Between races in this country or anywhere around the world. There's no such thing as interracial power sharing. This interracial marriage, this interracial sex, this interracial babies, but there's no interracial power sharing. Nobody shares power with another race except politically uneducated black people. And you know why you're so interested in power sharing? Number one, you're scared of white folks. Number two, you have low racial self-esteem. Number three, you've been brainwashed by your religion. There we go. You've been brainwashed by your religion. There we go. You've been brainwashed by your religion. We're the only people in the country Peculiar characteristics of the Negro psyche. We're the only people in the country. Peculiar characteristics of the Negro psyche. We're the only people in the country who let religion and our religious beliefs dictate our political economic behavior. Nobody else does that. Nobody else. I don't care. I don't care what the white man's Bible says About being a brother to every Christian 
they don't follow that when it comes time to accumulate power. I don't care what the Arabs Quran says about being a brother to humanity. They don't practice that when it comes time for power domination. I don't care what the European Jews Torah says about being a brother to humanity. They don't practice that when it comes to power domination and accumulation. Only black folks will let a 2,000 year old book, a 1,500 year old book, a 5,000 year old book dictate how you interact with your enemies in the 21st century. That makes you an imbecile. That makes you a fool. That makes you a political moron. Who in their right mind, living in the 21st century, living in the 21st century, you're going to let your political and economic behavior in the 21st century get dictated by a book that was written in the first century or the sixth century. You're out of your mind. You are out of your mind. You don't let a religious book from 2000 years ago dictate how you deal with other people in the 21st century. I'm just giving you the facts. If you don't like the message of Pan-Africanism, hop off the live. If you don't like the message of Pan-Africanism, hop off the live. See, I don't watch nobody else lives because ain't nobody talking about nothing I want to hear. I go live to educate. I don't go live to talk about people's personal business. I don't go live to try to character assassinate nobody. I don't go live to talk about sports. I don't go live to talk about rap. I don't go live to talk about celebrity gossip. I go live to raise the consciousness of African people. Stop letting your religion rule your political and economic decisions. If you need the Bible and the Quran to give you permission to fight for black people. You deserve to be taken advantage of. If you need a religious book to give you permission to fight for your people, you deserve to be taken advantage of. Religion over race. Religion over before race religion instead of race see this is one of the things that made mr garvey so great this is one of the things that made marcus messiah the most honorable marcus messiah garvey the greatest black leader of the 20th century and the greatest human organizer ever he was the only leader after slavery he was the only leader after slavery who organized us with an African consciousness. Marcus Garvey is the only mass leader post-slavery in America to organize us with an African consciousness. Everybody after Garvey brought you a damn church and a religion. Everybody did. Every last one of the post-Garvey copycat leaders... Every last one of the post-Garvey copycat leaders. Every last one of the post-Garvey copycat leaders brought you a damn religion and took you away from African consciousness. Every last one. And we've been practicing religion over race ever since. And we've been talking religion over race. I'm not against your religion. Revolutionary Pan-African nationalism, we believe in freedom of religion. Revolutionary Pan-African nationalism, we believe in freedom of religion. But if your religion doesn't allow you to be black, if your religion doesn't allow you to prioritize your people's liberation, if you tell me, Dr. Umar, my religion does not allow me to be part of a black liberation struggle, then your religion is an enemy of African people. If your religion does not allow you to fight for African liberation, 
then your religion is an enemy of African people. We are the only group in this country who believes in religion over race, and that is why we are where we are. Nobody else puts religion over race but Negroes. Nobody. Show me a group that practices religion over race. I want to see this. Show me one. Anywhere in the country, show me one. You can't find it. You can't find it. And do you know why everybody is race first except Negroes? Do you know why everybody is race first? Because the most organic, the most natural, the most pure, the most essential, the most undiluted thing you have that you belong to is your race. Nothing is more basic than your race. The only group you can never get out of is your race. The only group you can never change is your race. You could change your fraternity. You can change your sorority. You can change your lodge. You can change your religion. You can change your profession. You can change your language. You can change your nationality. You can't change your race. You can't change your race. And so that is why the most honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey said, we must learn to practice race first. We must learn to put race over religion. That's why we say African family first. A-F-F, -F, African family first. I have nothing against no other group. You shall have nothing against no other group. But in all things political, in all things intellectual, in all things economic, in all things social, in all things spiritual, I will put my people's agenda and concerns and issues above those of any other group. No other group has ever fought for black people. They have only fought for individuals of black people. I'm going to say it again. Understand, overstand, and understand me. No other race has ever fought to elevate African people as a race. They might have fought for certain black groups. They might have fought for certain black individuals. They have never fought to elevate us as a race. They never have, and they never will. Takes me to my next difference between us and the rest, peculiar characteristics of the Negro psyche. We are the only race in America and around the world, in America and around the world, that has no plan at all for its future generations. We have no plan for the children that are going to be born from 2030 to 2080. No plan for the children who are going to be born from 2080 to 2120. No type of roadmap at all for future generations. And you wonder why everybody want to be a gangster, a rapper, and an athlete. You wonder why everybody wants to be a gangster, a rapper, and an athlete. What else are they going to do? They belong to a community that does not give two shits. They belong to a community that does not give two shits about where their future generations are going to be. Guess what? European Jews have a thousand year plan. Chinese got a 2000 year plan. Anglo-Saxons got a 500 year plan. Arabs got a 250 year plan, at least, at least. They're thinking about their great grandchildren's great grandchildren. They're already talking about who's gonna rule the country, who's gonna be the leaders of the race 50 years from now, 25 years from now. And black people are on their knees praying to a white Jesus, begging for a redeemer. Black people are on their knees 
praying to a white Jesus, begging for a deliverer. Black people are on their knees praying to a white Jesus, asking for heaven to send them somebody who's going to help them solve their problems. We're the only group. I'm not talking about your children, brother. There you go with ego and selfishness. I did not say you did not have a plan for the children in your house. I did not say you did not have a plan for the children in your household. I did not say you did not have a plan for the children who live under your roof. I said we. I know it's hard for you self-hating Negro peons to think in terms of race first. I know this. The former slave is almost unable to think in terms of race. I understand it's hard for a people who've been told for 500 years that being a black African is the worst curse in human existence. I know this is what you believe. The next thing that separates Africans from everybody else is the worship of money and materialism. We are a laughing stock in this country because we worship money and materialism. Nobody else worships money and materialism. Black people have single-handedly made billionaires out of white manufacturing companies. Single-handedly, Louis Vuitton. Single-handedly, Gucci. Single-handedly, all these companies that we worship who don't even like black people. Worshipping, look at the gangster rappers. Look at these goofy ass gangster rappers who get on the video waving stacks of cash. When is the last time you seen a white musician get on the video and wave stacks of cash? When is the last time you seen a Chinese musician get on a video and wave stacks of cash? When is the last time you got You've seen a European Jewish musician get on a video and wave stacks and stacks and stacks of money. Who does that except black folks? The white man don't worship money and materialism. White man worship power. Chinese don't worship money and materialism. Chinese worship power. Arabs don't worship money and materialism. Arabs worship power. Power. European Jews don't worship money and materialism. European Jews worship power. And the Negro worships the money the white man makes and the materialism that the white man sells. And you wonder why we get no respect. How the hell we got rappers talking about all this money they got? Somebody help me out. We got all these rappers and all these athletes and all these actors and all these singers with all this money. We ain't got a single black Wall Street in America. Jay-Z is a billionaire. Kanye is a billionaire. LeBron is a billionaire. Bob Johnson is a billionaire. Whitney Houston is the richest woman in North American history. No disrespect to none of them. No disrespect to none of them. I like all of them, right? But can somebody tell me how you got all these billionaires and all these millionaires and you ain't got a single black Wall Street in, a, in black America? Somebody help me out. What am I missing here, Negro pins? What am I missing here? If Listen, I respect my brother Kanye. No disrespect. But if Kanye want to impress me, Build a black Wall Street. No disrespect to Jay-Z. If Jay-Z want to want to impress me, build a black Wall Street. No disrespect to Oprah. No disrespect to LeBron James. But if you want to impress me, build a black Wall Street. Go buy one of these towns for sale. Go buy one of these towns for sale. Go buy one of these towns for sale and open up an independent school. A real independent school. Okay? 
a real independent black bank, a real independent black hospital, a real independent black supermarket, a real independent black manufacturing sector to give jobs to black people. Do that. Do that. And I will praise your name from now until eternity. Do that. Because until you do that, you have done nothing for black folks. I don't care how many people you paid to get out of jail. That's good. I commend you, but that's not changing nothing. I don't care how many documentaries on police brutality you pay for. That's good. I commend you, but that's not changing nothing. I don't care how many protests you go to. I don't care how many congressional hearings you sit in. I don't care how many protests, how many interviews you do. That means nothing. If you want to change black America, you build institutions that black people control. If you don't like the message, hop off the live. Worshiping money and materialism. Negroes with 30 cars, 40 cars, 50 cars. But the neighborhood they come from still look the same. You know why? Black people have no obligation at all to their community. We have no obligation whatsoever to our community we'll move out of the ghetto that made us who we are and never look back and never reach back to help another black person and you wonder why we in the situation we in right now let's go to the next peculiar characteristic of the negro psyche we already talked about total rejection of african identity Black people hate being black. Lord, did you know skin bleachener? Is it a $4 million or $4 billion industry? I forget. I didn't know this. I think it's billion. Is it billion? I think it's billion. If I'm not mistaken, skin bleachener is a $4 billion industry. $4 billion. Black people. Four billion dollars a year to lighten your skin. Thirty billion to straighten your hair. You hate being black. Oh God, you hate being black. This is why the white power structure has been able to manipulate us out of the power conversation. With words like multicultural, people of color, non-white Americans, disadvantaged communities. Yes, you love those words. Black people love to be called a person of color. Black people love to be called a minority. Black people love to be called non-white American. Black people love to be called a disadvantaged American. You like to be called anything except black or African. You hate it. And because the white man knows you hate being black, he slides you over into this category called minority. And he gives all the minority set aside money. He gives all the minority set aside money. He gives all the minority set aside money to all the other groups and we don't get nothing and then we get mad when we don't get nothing and the reason you don't get nothing is because you don't want to stand up and stand out and be who you are if we refuse to be included in any other group except American African. If we did that, the whole policies would have to shift. If we refused to be lumped in with all the other non-white groups, so-called minority groups, they would have to change the whole policy of this country. Because so much of the policy is written for minorities. The American African should be a protected category, a uniquely 
protected category due to our uniquely different history and experience. Nobody in this country has been through what we've been through. Nobody. Nobody in this country has been through what we've been through. Nobody. Our unique history should be a plus in our political struggle. But it's not. Because so many blacks don't want to be black. And you actually think if you act white enough, they will forget you are black. This is how sick the Negro is. This is how insane the Negro pen is. This is how post-traumatic slavery diseased we are as a people. Just because you act white don't mean white people are going to forget you're black. But some of you believe this. If I bleach my skin, if I get a white girlfriend, if I go to a white college, if I live in a white neighborhood, if I think like white people, talk like white people, act like white people, they will forget that I'm black. You don't understand white supremacy. You don't understand white supremacy. You will never ever be able to escape your blackness. You will never ever able be able to outrun your blackness. You will never ever able you will never ever be able to shed your blackness. The only place where your blackness does not matter is in your own head. The only place your Africanity does not matter is in your own head. The only place where you can be perceived as being something other than a black African is in your head. You post-traumatic slavery disease Negroes. Economic crisis, I think we already talked about that. We're the only people who want to integrate their money with other groups. Black people are the only people who have no problem, no problem, giving their billions away to people who hate them. Can you find another group who does it? Can you please name another race that willingly and knowingly hemorrhages billions of its dollars to other ethnic groups who can't stand their guts. Can you name another group? Can you name another group of people in this country who willingly and knowingly gives billions of dollars away to other people who hate their guts? I don't know them. I don't know them. There's no such thing as economic integration. There's no such thing as political integration. There's only power accumulation and power domination. See, we got to get so serious about black revolution. We got to get so serious about black revolution that whenever you go to a meeting, you have one question. Today's meeting is about taking and accumulating and dominating power in what sector or industry. That's it. That's what the meeting is supposed to be about. We are here today to talk about taking over what industry? We are here today to talk about taking over what sector? Are we taking over the farms? Are we taking over the supermarkets? Are we taking over the fast food restaurants? Because if you open your eyes, if you open your eyes, the East Indians are rapidly taking over the hotel industry. Europeans, auto manufacturers. European Jews, banks and media. Chinese, import and export. Latinos and Mexicans, industrial building trade jobs. What sector, what industry are black people trying to take over? I forgot, you can't because you need money from the government to do anything. I forgot, you can't. You need money from the government before you can do anything for yourself. 
So you know what? All you Negroes who think you need money from the government before you do anything for yourself, will you please go buy some slave shackles and shackle your damn hands and feet behind your back? Because you are useless to the rest of us. I'm going to say it again. If you need a reparations check before you can get up off your ass and do something about our situation, you can't do nothing until you get some help from Joe Biden. You can't do nothing until you get some help from Congress. Separate those who are useless. Separate them. Put their ass out and shit. Shackle them up and get them up out of here. Any Negro who says we need a reparations check before we get started fighting is a Negro who will stop your development before he gets a handout from Uncle Sam. That is a dangerous Negro. That is a world famous dangerous Negro to say, I can't do nothing until my slave master give me some vittles. I can't do nothing until my slave master give me some vittles. I need some vittles, President Biden. I need some vittles, Vice President Harris. I need some vittles, Supreme Court Justice uh, Clarence. I need some vittles, Master. Until you give me some vittles, I can't do nothing. Never mind my two billion on Air Jordans. We ain't going to talk about that. Never mind my billion dollars to McDonald's every year. We're not going to talk about that. Never mind my 800 million on chicken, turkey, beef, and pork. We ain't going to talk about that. All this money we giving away to other groups. We are investing in other people's advantage over us. We are investing in other people's advantage over us. We are investing in other people's advantage over us. And then when it's time to invest in us, you need the government to do it. I'm going to say this again because I need y'all to understand me. Ashe, Ashe, Ashe. I'm going to say this again because I need y'all to understand me. When you buy fake hair, video games, clothes, car, nails, fake eyelashes, when you take your white girlfriend out to eat, you are investing in the empowerment of other race groups who hate you. And then when it comes time to invest in your group, you can't do it. You need the government to invest in your group. But you don't have no problem investing in another group. If that's not the definition of self-hatred. If that's not the definition of self-hatred. If that's not the definition of self-hatred. I don't know what is. And now we go to the snow demon crisis. That includes the snow puppies and the snow bunnies. The snow demon crisis is an embarrassment to the race. Black men, so-called kings, and we are, but we don't act like it. So-called emperors, and we are, but we don't act like it. We date outside the race more than all other men in the country put together as a percentage of the American population. We make babies with women of other races more than all other men put together as a percentage of the population. We marry outside the race more than all other men put together as a percentage of the population. And are we really going to sit here, black men? Are you really going to sit here and tell me that the black man's preference for the snow bunny is a pure accidental coincidence that is not rooted in slave trauma and low self-esteem. Are you really trying to convince me that black men are mating, dating, and procreating more? Mating, dating, and procreating more than all other men put together as a percentage of the population. Do you really want me to believe 
that has nothing to do with your self-hatred, nothing to do with your slave trauma, and nothing to do with your low racial self-esteem. Negro, you are crazy. And not only do you not end up with attractive snow bunnies, you don't get the pretty ones. You don't get five, five thick in a thigh. You don't get that. You get Neanderthal booty, Norbit, Neanderthal Norbit type queens. That's what you get. You get Neanderthal Norbits and you will love on that Neanderthal Norbit. You will worship that Neanderthal Norbit. You will drink her bath water. I'm going to get off the snow demon crisis because I think I've belabored the point. In fact, my name has become synonymous with the snow bunny crisis. I'm known all over TikTok for the snow bunny crisis. And it is an insult to every black woman, especially the enslaved black woman. I don't think black men realize how much of an insult you pay to your female ancestors. I don't think black men understand how much of an insult you pay to your female ancestors. When you date and marry outside the race. Let's go to the next one. We're down to the last five. Y'all ready for the last five? Next on the list. Black women are the only women who want to compete with, dominate, and destroy their men. This is not all sisters. I know that. This is not all sisters. I know that. This is not all sisters. I know that. But black women, if I'm going to get on the brothers, I got to get on you. Black women, if I'm going to get on the brothers, I got to get on you. Black women, if I'm going to get on the brothers, I got to get on the sisters. Black women are the only women in this country, only ones, who want to compete with, dominate, and destroy their men. I've been in relationships where I felt the woman was in competition with me. I've been in relationships where I felt the woman was in competition with me. I've heard it from other brothers. Why do we have to compete with our women? Why do black women feel a need to outachieve their husbands, compete with their husbands? Black women, you got to stop this. I didn't say there's anything wrong with you making more, having more, earning more. I'm saying that it is unhealthy for the black woman to have a spirit of competition with her king. A queen does not compete with a king on the throne. A queen does not compete with a king on the throne. A queen does not compete with a king on the throne. She has her role and he has his. She has her role and he has his. Black women have to stop modeling dysfunctional behavior for black girls. Stop modeling dysfunctional behavior for black girls. Black women, stop doing it. It's okay to show a little humility in the presence of your king. It ain't going to kill you. I did not say disrespect yourself. I did not say belittle yourself. I did not say reduce the power of your spirit or your mind or your brilliance. I said it's okay to be humble once in a while in the presence of your king. It's okay to not have to show other people you know more than your husband. It's okay to not have to show people you make more money than your husband. It's okay to not have to show people you put more money on the down payment for the house than your husband. Black woman, stop. Stop, stop, stop. Because you are risking the safety, security, and survival of the traditional black family as much as the rainbow gangers. Stop competing with black men. Stop doing it. Now let me move to the brothers. Beta males of the manosphere. Beta males of the manosphere. 
I see you, Nina Simone. I see you, Nina Simone. Beta males of the manosphere. I need you to stop publicly. I need the black man because you are the only man who does this. See, we're talking about peculiar characteristics of the Negro psyche. We're talking about peculiar characteristics of the Negro psyche. We're talking about peculiar characteristics of the Negro psyche. I need black men to stop publicly on YouTube, publicly on your podcast, publicly on your Instagram, your Facebook, your website. Black men, stop publicly shaming, humiliating, and insulting black women. That is unmasculine behavior. Alpha males don't do that. The job of the man is to promote and protect the woman. The job of the king is to promote and protect the queen. Black men have to stop publicly shaming, belittling, degrading, and insulting black women. By doing that, you are telling all the other men in this country with your weak ass. Do you know how dangerous that is when you do that? Do you black Negro males understand how dangerous it is for you to publicly tell the world, I don't like black women. I don't want a black woman. She's ugly. She's fat. She's thirsty. She got too many kids. She ain't bringing nothing to the table. Do you realize what you are doing to our people, to our girls, to our sons when you do that? Stop publicly shaming, abusing, condemning, criticizing, belittling, and desecrating the sacred, divine, feminine force of our community. And brothers, let me come to you with a little African spirituality. Brothers, let me come to you with a little African spirituality. In Yoruba culture, which I practice, there is a collection of spiritual forces known as the Iyami. I-Y-A-M-I. Please do your research on the Iyami, otherwise known as the Great Mothers. The Great Mothers. Are you listening, brothers? The Great Mothers. This is the collective force of all wombs. I hope you're listening, black man. Every black woman who has ever lived on this earth, every female spirit that has ever given birth to a child is part of this invisible, divine, majestic power known as the Iyami or the Great Mothers. This physical force of the Great Divine Feminine often visits those who offend sacred divine female energy in the middle of the night. They are largely a nocturnal energy that comes out at night. Europeans mistakenly refer to the great divine mothers, which is a righteous energy, as the witches. It's the original concept of the witch. Any woman who had spiritual power was considered the devil's maiden. I want y'all to hear me. Any woman who was considered spiritually gifted was considered to be evil. This is what the European taught. The witch. During slavery, the witch became the bitch. Black witch or bitch. So I need you black men to understand that when you disrespect black women, you are sowing karmic seeds. You are sowing karmic seeds. And your karmic debt sooner or later will be paid in full by a visit 
from the Iyami, the great African mother force of the universe, the great African sacred divine feminine can destroy your business for disrespecting black woman, can take your wife from you and give it to another man for disrespecting black woman can cause medical problems and health problems and political problems and social problems. All I'm saying to black men is when you offend the black woman, you are offending a sacred power that will protect her daughters. The great mothers will protect her daughters. And I would dare say black man, I would dare say black man, I would dare say that you will be punished 50 times worse than a white man. You will be punished 50 times worse than an Asian, an Arab, a Latino, an East Indian. You will be punished 50 times worse. You want to know why? Because you are a manifestation of the great sacred divine masculine. I am a manifestation of the great sacred divine masculine. God put black men on a pedestal spiritually. You're the first man. So you have an obligation to protect the first woman. It is a birthright obligation. It is a birthright obligation. It is a birthright obligation. And as a result of all this negritude and negrophobia, in hatred for the black woman being projected by the black man. I would tell every other brother listening tonight. I would tell every other brother listening tonight. Make sure you pray. And after you pray to the almighty who is neither male or female, but the owner of masculine and feminine energy. Make sure you pour libation to your ancestors. And when you pour libation and meditate to your ancestors, you make sure you let your mothers know. Let your great mothers know. Your great grandmama and your great great and your great great grandmama and your great great and your super great 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 grandmama. Let them know, grandmama. Female ancestors, great queen mothers. I take no part in the disrespect of black women. I take no part in the public disgracing of black women. I take no part in the belittling of black women and I will defend the honor of the black woman even if it costs me my life on earth. Because life never ends, only life on earth. Life never ends, only life on earth. Life never ends, only life on earth. Make sure the e me of your family tree, brothers. Make sure the e me of your family tree and the entire historic collective African female family tree, make sure they know that you are not on the wrong side of feminine energy. Masculine energy is supposed to be in harmony. Masculine energy and female energy are supposed to be in harmony with each other, not in conflict. This is why black women got to stop this beating up on the black man publicly. Black men got to stop this beating up on the black woman in public. We are destroying the spiritual foundation upon which we live. How many white women have you slept with? Zero. But you already knew that. Three more and we're done. Three more and we're done. No independent racial agenda. We have no independent racial agenda. We have no independent racial agenda and we don't want one. You know what our racial agenda is? Go vote for the white Democrats. That is the racial agenda for the Negro Pins. That is the racial agenda for the Congressional Black Caucus. That is the racial agenda for the NAACP. That is the racial agenda for the Urban League. That is the racial agenda of the black church. We have no racial agenda. All we got is vote in the next election. That's the only agenda we got. Vote and go to church. How has that saved us? Vote and go to church. How has that saved us since Dr. King's assassination? Somebody tell me how. What kind of a plan is that? Go vote for white people and go pray to hustlers in the pulpit. How has that worked out? 
how, see, when the Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey Academy is ready, when the Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey Academy is ready, Toledo, Ohio, August 11th, New York City, August the 17th, Cleveland, Ohio, African American Museum, August the 19th, Nat Turner Land, August the 21st, it's a black August with the Prince. When we open up FDMG, when we open up FDMG, you can join Team Pan-African. You can become a card-carrying member of Team Pan-African. There will be levels to the membership. We will have life insurance. We're going to have health insurance. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I can't tell y'all everything I'm working on. I can't tell y'all everything I'm working on, but I'm telling you, when FDMG is ready, my brothers and sisters, the ancestors will celebrate with us. Two more. We have no economic loyalty to ourselves. We have zero economic loyalty to ourselves. Black people have no economic loyalty. Why do black businesses have to break their neck to get a dollar from a black person? The only black businesses that don't have to break their neck to get a dollar from black folks is the hair salons in the soul food restaurants. If you got a hair salon in a soul food restaurant, you okay. Any other black business got to break their neck to get a dollar from black folks because you have no economic loyalty. When the last time you seen a Mexican in a black store? When the last time you seen an Arab in a black store? When the last time you seen a European Jew in a black store? When the last time you seen an East Indian or a Native American in a black store? Nobody spends with us, especially us. Nobody spends with us, especially us. Nobody spends with us, especially us. That's why when we open up FDMG, we're going to have a black business directory that's going to blow your mind. It's going to be off the hook. I'm going to organize black businesses in a way like they've never been organized before. I'm going to do what Booker T. Washington did. He opened a school, ran a school, and had the National Negro Business League. Pan-Africanist Booker T. Washington opened a school, ran a school, and had the National Negro Business League. Pan-Africanist Booker T. Washington opened a school, ran a school, and had the National Negro Business Business League. Lord ancestors, let's finish this. Let's get the job done. Irun Mole, let's finish. Egbe, Iyami, Orun Mila, let's finish FDMG. And let's begin the process of nation building for our people. Last but not least. And probably the biggest problem on the list. I've covered 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and this is 13. 13 peculiar characteristics of the Negro psyche, which explains why we are dead last in the race for survival in this country and around the world. Number 13, last but not least. We have no interests. You want to know why we don't have a black Wall Street? We have no interest whatsoever. You want to know why we don't have a black Wall Street? We have no interest at all in an exclusively black community. If I'm lying, say it. If I am lying, will somebody please shame the devil? Is Dr. Umar lying when I say that most of our people have no interest in an exclusively black community. Everybody celebrating Black Wall Street, most of us are a bunch of hypocrites. Everybody celebrating Black Wall Street, most of us are a bunch of hypocrites. Everybody celebrating Black Wall Street, most of us are a bunch of hypocrites. 
There's no way in hell you're going to celebrate Black Wall Street, but you live in a white suburb. You live amongst white folks. You bank amongst white folks. You shop amongst white folks. You vote in a white political party. You send your kids to a white private school and you want to tell me you believe in black power. Use a damn hypocrite. Use a damn hypocrite. Use a damn hypocrite. Black people do not want a black community. You don't. Unless it got white people in it. First of all, half y'all married outside the race anyway. Half of y'all married outside the race anyway. Half of y'all married outside the race anyway. So you can't be part of no exclusively black community anyway. Let, let's just keep it a buck. Let's just keep it a thousand. Most of you are snow bunnied. Most of you Negroes have already been snow bunnied, male and female. You can't be part of an exclusively black community. But for those of you who have not been snow bunnied, for those of you who have not been snow bunnied, for those of you who have not been snow bunnied, you don't want to be part of no exclusively black community. You don't want to wake up and everybody in the hospital black, everybody in the supermarket black, everybody in the bank black, everybody in the school black, all the pictures are black. The dogs are black, the cats are black, the fish are black, the snakes are black. How many of you love black people that much that you are willing to spend your life, the remainder of your time on earth, in an exclusively black community? Chinese do it. European Jews do it. Arabs do it. East Indians, Latinos. We are the only people who don't have a single independent black community in this country not one of you 50 million Africans 50 states 50 million Africans in America 50 states not a single black Wall Street you know why because you hate yourself know why you love white folks I read an autobiography from an ex from a black panther who was a real black panther from the Panthers of the 60s I forget his name, but he was uh, the marshal of the Black Panther Party. I'm forgetting his name. He was in Oakland with Bobby and Huey. Anybody remember his name? Light-skinned, fair-skinned brother. He lived out the rest of his days in France. I forget his name. You know what this brother told me? I read his autobiography last week. Because you have to read, you have to study. Don't be an intellectual masturbator, but you have to be knowledgeable. This brother said in the book, and I'm paraphrasing, this marshal for the black, the original Black Panther Party now, he was in the wars with the party. He had to go into exile. He said that for all the revolutionary integration we talked about uniting with other revolutionary anti-capitalist groups he said the only integrating i really saw was between the sheets i'm gonna repeat it because i don't think y'all heard me i just bought the book last week and i read the book last week i bought the book last week it was from not bunchy carter bunchy was murdered he talked about bunchy's murder no 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 this was another brother donald ah, i can't forget i never heard of him before I never heard of him before, but he was a frontliner. I never heard of him until his autobiography came out. He was a frontliner. He said, for all the revolutionary collaborations we talked about, all the revolutionary cooperations we talked about with the radical white and brown socialist groups, he said, quote, most of the integrating I saw was between Cox. There you go. Cox. What's his name? Daniel Cox. I hope a white man didn't give me that answer, did he? But anyway, that was him. Donald Cox. Read Donald Cox's autobiography. Donald Cox. Read it. Very good autobiography. I learned a lot about the struggle in that. But he basically said that the revolutionary brothers was more interested in them white cookies than white revolutionary cooperation. Same thing with the Pan-African Socialists. Pan-African Socialists ain't no different. They love white women too. 
Yep, I said it. I said it. Pan-African socialists love white girls too. Maybe not all of you, but let's be honest. A lot of pan-African socialists sleep with white girls. And that's why y'all don't like me, because I'm pan-African nationalist, and you like white girls, and that's why you want to talk that socialism, communism, because you want an excuse to sleep with the white girl. So, as we conclude tonight's lesson, as we conclude tonight's lesson, I want to say thank you. I want to say thank you for those of you who have stood by me these 25 years that I've been fighting for our children. Some of you have only known me the past 12 years because you wasn't familiar with my Pennsylvania activism days. You're not familiar with my Philadelphia activism days. You've only known me since the Chicago interview of September 18, 2010. But I'm here to tell you the best of Ifa Tunde is yet to come. The best of Ifa Tunde is yet to come. I had a brother come up to me at the Bantu Fest in Chicago. I had a brother come up to me at the Bantu Fest in Chicago. He said, Dr. Umar, you saved my life. I had another brother say, Dr. Umar, you changed my life. I had another brother say, Dr. Umar, you raised me. I said, what? He said, bro, I think he was 22. He said, I've been listening to you since I was 10 years old, man. You raised me. Your videos is the reason I don't sell dope. Your videos is the reason I got my own business. Your videos is the reason I'm married right now. I had no idea that there were grown men walking around who were literally raised on the gospel of Ifa Tunde. I had no idea that there's young women walking around who were literally raised on the gospel of Ifa Tunde. And all I can say to that is the best is yet to come. We got to get this school done. If you got any electricians or plumbers or HVACers, it's time to finish FDMG. Three and a half years is too long. We got six weeks until the festival. And I'm hoping the school is done in six weeks. It's a long shot, but it's possible. Please go to FDMGFestival.com and register. Please go to FDMGFestival.com and register. Please go to FDMGFestival.com and register. If you want to be a vendor, send an email fdmgvendors with an s at gmail.com fdmgvendors with an s at gmail.com if you want to perform on a stage no blonde hair fdmg performances at gmail.com if you want to perform on the stage no blonde hair fdmg performances at gmail.com we need some children's groups for the festival if you have a children's group boys girls dance song if you have a children's group, we are in need of some children performers. Please email fdmgperformances at gmail.com. Hit the cash app, dollar sign FDMG school. Hit the cash app, dollar sign FDMG school. Hit the cash app, dollar sign FDMG school. Hit the PayPal, paypal.me slash FDMG Academy. Hit the PayPal, paypal.me slash FDMG Academy. For the shockumentary, hit the cash app, dollar sign Dr. Umar Johnson. For the shockumentary, hit the cash app, dollar sign Dr. Umar Johnson. For the shockumentary, hit the cash app, dollar sign Dr. Umar Johnson. For the shockumentary, hit Chazelle, 215-989-9858. For the shockumentary, hit Chazelle, 215-989-9858. For the shockumentary, hit Chazelle, 215-989-9858. If you live in New York City and you have a testimonial for the shockumentary, America's Psychoacademic War Against Black Boys. If you live in New York 
and you want to be interviewed, if you have a story of miseducation, a story of racism in the school, a story of school police brutality, a story of ADHD abuse, a story of psychiatric medication, a story of learning disability abuse, autism abuse, a misdiagnosis, conduct disorder, juvenile detention, expulsion, suspension, racism. If you live in the state of New York, I will be interviewing mothers, fathers, Black men who want to tell their story of what they went through as a black boy in public or charter or private or independent school. Please text your name, city, and the word shockumentary to 215-989-9858. I will be interviewing New Yorkers in Manhattan Thursday, August the 4th. I will be interviewing New Yorkers in Brooklyn on Sunday, August the 7th. I will be interviewing New Yorkers in Manhattan Thursday, August the 4th. I will be interviewing New Yorkers in Brooklyn Sunday, August the 7th. Please tell your story. I'm only in New York two days. I'm not coming back. If you want to tell your story, if they did your child wrong, it's time to tell. You don't have to name no names. You don't have to name no schools. Tell your story. Retired teachers, retired principals, retired nurse, retired counselor, retired uh, school psychologist. Tell your story. 215-989-9858. If you live in Delaware, Maryland, or the District of Columbia, if you live in Delaware, Maryland, or the District of Columbia, I will be coming to your state in August to film, text your name, city, state, in the word shockumentary. Black businesses, if you want to send Dr. Umar a sample of your merchandise, send it to my P.O. Box 6872 Philadelphia. Send it to my P.O. Box 6872 Philadelphia, 19132. All members of the E5 Tunde Queendom, I'm looking forward to your birthday gifts this year. All members of the E5 Tunde Queendom, I'm looking forward to your birthday gift this year. Mail my birthday gifts to P.O. Box 6872 Philadelphia, 19132. Toledo, Ohio, August 11th. Text me for the flyer. New York City, August 17th. Cleveland, Ohio, August 19th. Text me for the flyer. Nat Turner Land, Virginia. Everybody needs to be there. August the 21st, Waldorf, Maryland, September the 18th, London, England, September the 24th, Limpopo, South Africa, November 18th and 19th, but on Saturday, September the 10th, on Saturday, September the 10th, on Saturday, September the 10th, I need everybody to be at the Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey Academy, second annual FDMG Festival from 10 in the morning till 8 at night. Food, games, vendors, performers, drums, music, hugs from E5 Toon Day for the Queens, books from E5 Toon Day, free food, giveaways, and we also gonna have a red, black, and green FDMG pillow raffle. Red, black, and green FDMG pillow raffle. Red, black, and green FDMG pillow raffle. You must have a state-issued driver's or non-driver's license to get into the festival. You must have a state-issued driver's or non-driver's license to get into the festival. You must have a state-issued driver's or non-driver's license to get into the festival. This is one of my wifeys. I'm just trying to cook for your birthday. Appreciate you, beautiful. Can I be your third wife? We got to talk about that. Would you consider a queen from the continent? I want to be a vendor. Text email. I'm tempted to do a shockumentary teleconference question and answer session. I'm tempted to do a shockumentary question and answer teleconference. I might do it later tonight. My Zell is my cell number. My Zell is my cell number. I'm going to hold off on the shockumentary telethon for donations right now. I might come back and do it later. This is the Prince of Pan-Africanism signing out. You know how to reach me. 
215-989-9858. Peace and Pan-Africanism.